Legacy DMX controllers. I use it for my dumb RGB universe, and I also can use it for Legacy Pixel controllers, such as the uh, Israeli Pixel controller uh, that you can find on um, on the eBay website for under $20. What I wanted to do was I wanted to update to the most um, uh, recent firmware version, which is 4.1. And uh, the reason I want to do that is because I want to use GECE pixels. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into network settings, and we'll go into the control panel. And from the control panel, uh, which opened up up here, we'll go into the network and internet uh, settings. We'll go into the sharing center. And when we get to the sharing center, which is taking uh, a little bit of time to get to. We uh, we see that we are not on the internet. We are on an unidentified network, and the reason why is because currently I have the uh, DIY LED Express bridge right here. I have the bridge set up for uh, use. Uh, Right now, it's connected to my output on my RJ45 connection. So we're going to click on this Change Adapter Setting. Now, you'll notice that once that whenever you get to this local area connection, that there is actually a connection, and that means that they are connected. The bridge is connected to the back of the computer. And if we double-click on here, we get the we get the local area connection status. Bring that back, and uh, we're going to click on Properties here. When we open up the properties, we're, we're looking for um, the ability to change um, the connection to the inter from, from the Internet into a specific protocol. And we want to go into version 4, TCP IP version 4, and double-click on that. Once you double-click on that, we're going to set this up to use a specific network. Now, I'm using a shared internet connection through a router and uh, on my home internet. But since the internet's not connected and I want to connect directly to this bridge, I need to set up my computer so that it's on the same network that I want to talk to. So to do that, we're going to hit go click on the IP address and we're going to enter uh, the standard IP which I'm using for my show, which is 192.168. One and then I'm signing my computer dot three. The subnet mask, if you double click, should auto fill in. And then I come down here and I use the exact same IP address as I had used up here for a preferred DNS server. Now I'm not a network guru. I just know that this works for my show. If this may be the wrong thing to do, if if I am, please let me know. Leave a comment in the description below. Um, but once you're done with that, you click OK and uh, you click OK again. And then you can close the uh, close the uh, screens to your local connection. Now I have a new tab here, and that's one nine two one six eight dot one dot two zero six. And I've uh, got it all set up. I'm going to go ahead and click enter, and you can see that the firmware revision is listed as three point zero one. In in version three point zero four, you cannot use any other protocol except for DMX and Renard. So that's what we're going to fix. That's what exactly what we're going to be doing in the next few steps. Go back to our bridge page here, and if you scroll down from uh, the DIY LED Express page, you go to the board info and build instructions link, and if you click on it, you will end up actually back here at the wiki. I'll go ahead and do that. Open link in new tab. And here we are. This is what the uh, wiki would look like whenever you uh, click over to it. Um, and obviously this is the bridge there. See how output 1 is on the right, output 6 is on the left. And if we scroll down here, the next thing that we're going to be looking for is uh, we need to go to program in the EEPROM. When we click on that, it takes us automatically down to the EEPROM setup. Now, what is the EEPROM? Well, the EEPROM is uh, directly from the propeller chip company. It is a insert that goes on top of the board, into the board. It connects directly right here to this uh, port, the prop port. And, uh, and there are specific outputs that you have to connect correctly. Um, as we go back down to programming the EEPROM, in order for us to uh, 
uh, put the correct version, the, the newest version, which is 4.01, we're going to click on download here. And we need to go back and do a, a little bit of cleanup here. We need to go back into network and internet. And we have to set this up so I can get back on the internet. So we're going to go down here. We're going to go back into our control panel. And we'll go back into network and internet. Network and sharing. Network 7, which, uh, which is the adapter. We're going to change the adapter. Double click on it and go to properties. When we go to properties, we want to go back into that version 4 TCP IP right here, double click, and we're going to obtain IP address automatically. Um, if anybody knows how to do this without me having to go through this, great. I am not a network expert, but I know how to get this to work for myself. Uh, I do a lot of this between two computers whenever I'm sequencing. So now I should be able to click on this here and automatically we'll have a bridge version 4.01 EEPROM .eprom file which will show up. We'll click on, we'll allow this to save file and we'll just download it right there. The next step that we're going to do is scroll down here and look at our um, our programming tools that were re are required and what we see here is the prop uh, processor the propeller processor uh, and the actual EEPROM tool now this little guy here there is a specific order that these have to be uh, plugged in onto the board which you saw earlier uh, that they go in a specific order and you connect it to the board you can buy the prop plug from uh, DIY LED Express by going to going to the um, uh, prop or the uh, the bridge kits page and then under the bridge kits this is found. Uh, so it, the propeller is the propeller here is really a nice uh, addition to uh, both this and for the E682 for updating the firmware. It's very very easy. So once we ordered this and we have this we can go back we know that we have this uh, item we can go into scrolling on down how to install the firmware into your programming now we have to go into another program we have to download another program the parallax propeller tool now if i click on this this opens up to another page it says propeller tool software we're going to go to this link right here the px uh, the p8x32 alpha setup propeller tool and uh, we'll go ahead and download this. Now this downloads as a zip file and uh, I use uh, WinRoar and it works very well for me. All I'm going to do is click download and it's automatically going to take a couple of it's going to take a couple of seconds and once I get it downloaded I've already got it right here so I would just click on the file whenever it's done downloading open it up and it's going to unzip the file for me. Now I have this setup tool.exe and if I run this program it's not going to take any time for me to run this program. I don't need to run this because I've already done it. And I'm going to close out of this. But the other thing I want to point out is the instructions are basically all right here. Don't connect your prop uh, cord until after you've installed, you've downloaded, you run the installer, then you can connect your propeller cord, uh, your propeller, your actual propeller plug. Uh, once you get this all done, the next thing that you're going to do after your file has been uh, um, downloaded, you, you get this propeller tool version 1.2.3. If it doesn't show up here in your quick logs, you, you can come down here to your parallel parallax incorporated and uh, open up your propeller tool. This is very, very simple to set up. We're now going to go in and we're going to find the file and we're going to open the file that we downloaded with the bridge 4.01. I click open and now you also click the uh, make sure that the show hex is clicked. This will be the object info. Click on show hex and then you have all of the information here that's going to get loaded onto this propeller plug. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to physically plug in the USB cord that runs from the USB output to the prop. So let's go back to back to the propeller uh, the propeller tool 
and we're going to load the EEPROM. Before we do that, I'm going to connect directly to the board. I'm going to connect the uh, prop plug to the prop plug connection on the board. And I'm going to line up, it says VSS, I'm going to line up the VSS with the VSS. Now that it's connected, which you can't see unfortunately, you're going to click the load EEPROM. Now if we go back down here, um, let's see, you can close the propeller tool application and double click on the EEPROM file you downloaded, which we've already done. The object info screen will open up and show hex. We did that. Now we connect the prop plug to the PC and the PCB, making sure the prop plug is oriented correctly. We've done that. And now we're going to program the EEPROM by simply selecting the load EEPROM and you're done. So that's the next step is load EEPROM. We see the, the prop, uh, prop plug is now communicating with the programmer and it is loading and verifying, verifying the file and that's all there is. Once that it says you are done. Okay great so now how do we test this? Well first of all I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to unplug my propeller. I am going to have to disconnect my network cord and I'm going to have to plug it in directly to my unit which you can't see right now so I've connect made the direct E131 connection and now I have to go through this uh, crazy step of going back into control panel whoops go into network and internet network and sharing go into change adapter setting double click on local area connection properties there we go and we go into TCP IP version 4 double click now we're going to go back in and put our our standard IP address of 192.168.1.3 automatically fill the subnet in and then 192.168.1.3 click OK OK and close and close okay so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna open up a brand new um, uh, tab and we're going to type in uh, the default address which every time you update the firmware on these on the uh, DIY bridge you uh, you need to go back to the original default address of the board which is 192.168.1.206 and we will enter that and cross our fingers and ta-da we have our configuration page set up now um, the nice thing here to know is that we have the uh, firmware revision 4.01. That is awesome news. If I come up here and I look at the previous tab, our firmware revision was 3.04. So according to this, we've successfully upgraded the firmware in the system. Uh, I'm going to do something real quick while I'm here, and I'm going to update my IP address from the 206 uh, extension to the 12 extension. And I'm going to update system settings. And once that's done, I'll scroll down to the bottom, and it says changed settings require reboot. So I'm going to click the reboot button. Now the funny thing is, is it's going to try and ask for this right here, the 206 reboot, to come up. And it's not going to come up. The page will not roll because we have updated our current page number from 206 to uh, dot one two. And as you can see over on the right here, the spinning uh, wheel is still spinning because it can't find dot two oh six. It's going like what the heck. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to delete that out, and I'm just going to see. There it is. Connection reset. I'm just going to go and change this last three numbers to one two, and hope that the bridge has successfully updated the IP address which it has. Um, now. The real big reason why I want to run this firmware is because, as I said earlier, I want to run GE color effects pixels on my window frames as well as a mega wreath and some other items in the display without having to use a lot of um, 
a lot of outputs from my E682, which is a little bit more expensive. I'm actually not using uh, one, uh, most all of my bridge, uh, that my in original bridge, and then I am using, I picked up this bridge from David, and I planned on using it to run the GECE protocol. Now, you can't just you know plug pixels into the board. You need something called a pixel extender kit, which you find uh, from DIY LED Express. Once again, go in under the bridge kit section on their website and do a search for bridge kits and the pixel extender kit. Currently listed as back order, it's only thirteen dollars and thirty nine cents. Now this pixel extender can run uh, up to, I believe, one one universe of uh, WS twenty eight eleven pixels. Um, but it, uh, as far as GECE pixels, it can only run sixty four because that's the the uh, limitation of the GECE protocol. Um, the nice thing about this pixel extender is just this reason. Since they use a true RS-485 driver, they can be lo located thousands of feet away from the bridge, giving you ample configuration options for, the, for those locations for full controller or Ethernet run is not optional. So what I'm happy about is I will be able to place this bridge on my roof in a very uh, discreet location where people will not see the box, and I will be able to run individual cords from this bridge using the Ethernet cable out to the display item. This will create a far less invasive setup for my window frames to have pixels on them without having to have one massive controller in the middle and a bunch of wires uh, going here to there. Look, I know guys that this has been a long video, but it's important for you to remember a lot of these steps that I went through specifically on setting up and connecting using your computer and connecting to your uh, E131 controllers. One of the biggest things that new folks have run into is the fact that they have, they're trying to connect to their computer using their uh, router or a switch and their computer does not have a set IP address. You have to have a set IP address in my experience. Like, like I said, I'm not an expert at this, but if your computer does not have a set IP address, it will not connect correctly or will not output correctly all of the pixel data from Lightarama or uh, Nutcracker. Um, now, I, I can be wrong. I'm, I'm, like I said, not an expert, but I have had more trouble just because I did not go through and set up my network settings, my network connection going into here and going into properties and adjusting and adding in my property to uh, to uh, TCP IP 4 version 4 and adding my IP uh, address and my uh, sub my my preferred DNS address so uh, thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this I hope you find this really helpful please leave your comments especially if you guys think that there are better ways to do this uh, I am all ears so uh, thanks a lot take care and uh, have a great one check me out on the website once again it's leechberglights.com if you have any questions please email me at leechberglights at gmail.com. Take care, guys. Have a good one.